don't know what to do. And is that if there's anybody out there that knows anything, please just bring her home. We'll do anything. Take me. The family of adorable five-year-old Nevaeh Buchanan pleads, begs, begs for her safe return as cops make a gruesome discovery. Published reports say they found a bloody knife in the tackle box of a registered sex offender who they say is the mom's boyfriend. And a person of interest in this case, I get so angry, I can barely, barely, barely stand it when I hear uh, the idiocy that adults display with their choices when there are kids at stake. We're going to go to the phone lines in a moment. They're lit up. But first, Michael Rosenfield, reporter from CNN affiliate WXYZ in Detroit. Michael, what have you learned? Well, as we know, Nevaeh Buchanan was last seen in this very parking lot where I'm standing here at her apartment complex. Last seen Sunday afternoon riding her scooter. There's been a massive search since then and so far no sign. And here are some new developments we have learned today that police have actually executed a search warrant at a motel not too far away. At a motel room where this person you've been talking about, George Kennedy, a friend of Nevaeh's mother, he's been living over the last few weeks, they executed that search warrant, and they confiscated several items, including a bloody pair of shorts, a bloody oh. towel, and they took a sample of blood from the wall in the bathroom above oh. the bathroom sink. They also took uh, some hair and fibers and some photos of a girl that police say resembles Nevaeh Buchanan. All of that stuff is being tested right now. Now, we also know that they searched his van that was parked not too far away at a friend's house, and inside that van, they found fishing weights and a silver tool. Oh. I know a lot of people have said it's a knife, but I myself have read that affidavit and the search warrant today. It says a silver multi-tool that did have blood on it, and it has tested positive for human blood. All of this oh, being tested to see if it has any connection to the disappearance of Nevaeh Buchanan. Uh, excellent report, Michael. I just want to confirm these horrible, horrible facts that you are telling us now. You're saying they found in this creepo's Motel room, bloody shorts, and a bloody towel. Michael, is that yeah, what you just said? this is a motel. Said? It's called... Yeah, I did. The it's bloody a motel, shorts and a bloody from... towel. Yes? Yeah, bloody shorts, a bloody towel, and a blood stain from the wall above the sink. And this guy's living in a Motel 7. Uh, this, uh, honestly, when I hear this stuff, I, I, I just... It's beyond comprehension to get this stuff live where, where you, you realize the implications of it. Robin in Louisiana... Your question or thought, ma'am? I'm sick right now. Me I am too. really sick. I have an 11-year-old boy that my husband and I watch like a hawk. We don't let him go with nobody, nowhere, that we do not know and trust beyond a shadow of a doubt. How can this woman date somebody that has been a sex offender? And shouldn't she be charged with, I mean, child neglect? Something? Well, Stacey Hodowitz, should she? Well, I just want to tell your caller, you know, you think this is out of the ordinary. I see it all the time because I'm involved in the sex crimes unit. We see w women all the time that allow sex offenders to come live in the house because they're more concerned with their lives than they are their child. And yes, there is a movement now to try to charge these women with neglect because basically it is neglect. It's neglecting the well-being of your child. And so if, in fact, it turns out that something happened with this child and it was the sex offender who has, in fact, committed this crime, if this child is no longer with us, then the mother should be charged. But then you're looking at the lesson in futility. I mean, basically, the, the, if the child's gone, you're charging the mother. It has to be preventative. These, th there has to be something on the books that tells these women or men, because sex offenders are both, that if you put your child purposely in danger by allowing a sex offender to have visits with your child, then you yourself are going to be charged. And maybe there's got to be something where people, it's a, it's a deterrent that they know they can't do this. Well, right Curtis now, Sliwa, might be a little too, little too late. I'm wondering about this mom. Cops say she flunked a portion of a polygraph test she took Monday. Now, at first, she was quoted as sort of admitting that and saying she was tired and stressed. But then she was later quoted as saying she believes she passed the lie detector test. She told the Detroit Free Press that Nevaeh's dad's side of the family is spreading word that she flunked and it's all lies. Uh, what about this flip-flop? What do you make of her? Oh, what a dysfunctional human being she is. Her child, well, the reverse of the words, I mean, the letters means heaven. And yet clearly she has subjected her to total hell. 
Imagine, I mean, think of it. Jay, we have registries now. You can go online. You can see who these sexual predators are. And she knows. And there are other people in the neighborhood who would tell little Johnny, little Sally, stay away from that man down at the cul-de-sac. And she knowingly, willingly allows him to come into her house and exposes the child to this. As far as I'm concerned, she's as guilty as the individual who is responsible. Let's hope that she's not in heaven. I hope she's alive, but it's certainly not looking that good. All right, hey, Nancy. Hey, hey, oh, yeah, go ahead. Jane, and, and when you start talking about the polygraph, what is this thing I, I think I passed? I mean, if you're taking a polygraph, it's yes and no answers. You know if you lied to them or not. You don't have to think whether you passed or not. I agree. Nancy, Ohio, your question or thought? Yes, I love your show, Jeff, Thank Jane. You. Never miss an episode. Um, I live in Ohio, and I'm wondering, has the family cooperated with giving any of Nevaeh's personal belongings to match the blood to the knife that was found? Uh, Michael Rosenfield, what do you know? Yeah, police have been in and out of the home, which is right behind me. They've spoken to family members uh, repeatedly over the last 72 hours. They, police say they have been very cooperative, handing over whatever has been requested. Uh, Michael Cardoza, we're delighted to have you. You're joining us in progress. Let's give you an update, sure. a very, very sad update. We just heard from uh, this reporter that authorities found bloody shorts and a bloody towel, as well as something that was initially believed to be a knife, but it's some other kind of tool with human blood on it. And that is uh, connected to the hotel room or the Motel 7 room of this convicted sex offender who was friends or, or in a romantic relationship. We're getting conflicting reports with the mother of the missing child. Yeah, it, it, interesting. But let me address when you were talking about the polygraph test. And one of the guests said that, you know, they should know, the mother should know whether she passed the polygraph if she told the truth. I, I don't necessarily agree with that at all. I've had clients and know people that have told the truth in polygraph exams and they've failed it uh, for one reason or another. Remember, polygraphs are not allowed into our courtrooms and they're not allowed in for a reason because they're not reliable. So to put well, that's not, that's not true. That's, that's not true, true that they're not true. reliable. They're not sure allowed in court. We know that they're not allowed in court, because but they are, they're a great, not reliable. they are a great investigative tool and they've been proven more times than not to be accurate than they have what you just said. The reason they're not accurate is because polygraph examiners interpret what they see. What's on a polygraph is open to interpretation. Well, so well, to this, say, this well, she should this know is she not passed, a discussion I don't agree with that this at all. Is, all right, we've got to go. Yeah, I all agree. Right. It's a discussion about uh, bad decisions by adults. Fabulous panel, thank you for your insights. Casey Anthony gets ready for tomorrow's courtroom showdown. I will tell you.